Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I will be telling you on how you should actually properly expose for S-Log2. Sorry if this is a bit close, but you know, let's try something new. Let's go. The common mistake I see is that filmmakers tell us to overexpose by two stops, but what they don't tell us is why should we need to overexpose by two stops. So. Let me explain it for you. According to Alistair Chapman, who has mastered and studied S-Log2 extensively, S-Log2 has around 14 stops of dynamic range. That means it captures 14 stops from the darkest parts of your image up to the brightest parts of your image. Unlike normal Rec. 709 Gamma, which is what our conventional TV and screens use, it has 6 stops of dynamic range, which gives its video we look where the brightest parts on your image just blows out like a nuclear bomb and the shadow areas are just too dark. So to capture the best dynamic range, we need to shoot with S-Log2. By the way, what separates a film from that video we look is dynamic range because the better the dynamic range, the more cinematic it will look. Okay, so with that information out, how do we expose for S-Log2? According to Sony's white paper, S-Log2 was engineered to be exposed at 32% IRE on middle gray. I will save you the headache and just expose for that because that is actually the right way on how to expose for it. Use the custom zebras on your Sony camera and put it at standard plus range, 32, then plus, minus 1. You're all set, right? Yes, but no. According to Alistair, since S-Log2 was designed to be used with high-end Sony digital cameras that can capture 10-bit images like the F65, using it with an 8-bit camera like our mirrorless alpha cameras would introduce noise. That is the reason why we push or overexpose S-Log2, because we want less noise. It is not the correct exposure, but to have less noise with our 8-bit cameras, we need to overexpose. So to test that out, we have an 18% middle gray card and we would put our zebras at 32%. This is the correct exposure that was set by Sony but since our camera is only 8-bit and not 10-bit, exposing like this would introduce noise. Overexposing it by one stop cleans our image a bit. With one stop overexposed, our middle gray card is now at 43% IRE. With two stops overexposed, we have a very clean image and the zebras are sitting at 55% IRE. This is what most of us should be doing because this gives the cleanest image. This is what the others have been teaching, but only saying to overexpose by two stops and without any scientific data to back it up is very vague. Overexposing by two stops gives our shadow and black areas more information so when we bring it down in post, it gives us a cleaner image. The only downside with overexposing by two stops is that we lose highlight information. When we overexpose by one stop, then we also lose one stop of highlight info. Same with two stops overexposed. We lose two stops of highlight information because we are pushing our image on the top part of our log curve. As a cinematographer, you need to know when to overexpose and when not to. So there you have it. The correct exposure for Sony's S-Log2 is 32% IRE on middle gray. We only overexpose because it gives us a cleaner image. If you like this video, please click the dislike button and please don't subscribe. I'm fine with having only under 800 subscribers. 